Hello, my beautiful people. How are you? How's been your week? I've had a tremendous week. What about you? I know you've had a very blessed testimony filled week. Let us pray. Father Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time in your presence. Father, we've come again to learn. Holy Spirit, over to you. Less of me, more of you, my Father. I plead the blood of Jesus all over the environment. And for everyone that is listening, Father, let us not just be hearers, but doers of your word. That at the end of the day, Lord, we shall all make it to heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. Amen, amen, amen. It's good to see you. I always look forward to Sunday. Why? So that we'll talk about the Lord Almighty. You know, it's always good. You know, there's joy in the presence of the Lord. So when I'm in the presence of, of the Lord Almighty, I'm always happy. And I'm sure you're also the same. My name is Evangelist Mary O. Ajakaye. And, and, and I know that as you're connecting, you've subscribed. If you've not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Don't delay. Subscribe instantly. And make sure you press the bell button so you get notification once there's an update or a live program or anything. And then make sure you share, like, subscribe, please. That's a way of evangelizing, you know. Today, the Holy Spirit has given us a topic. And it's tied to the power of persistence. The power of persistence. We're going to be reading from the book of Luke 18. I'm reading from the New King's James Version. New King's James Version. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose hearts. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayers and ended with prayers. Prayer is the master key. Saying there was in a certain city. A judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city. And she came to him saying, get justice for me, for my adversary, for my adversary. And he will not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man. Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Least by her continual coming, she weary me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and at night in him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? Now, there are certain things the Lord wants us to note about this particular Bible passage. The first thing is that there was a widow. This widow had no help. As we all know that in the human terminology, a widow is a, a woman that lost her husband. So she has no help. There's no man. There's nobody to help her. She's just on her own. But there was something very significant about this widow. She knew that she had no help, but she had a choice. She knew she had no help, but she had a choice. So many times as children of God, the choices we make is the one that determines whether we're going to have a testimony or not. We have a choice. You have a choice to get up in the morning and go to church. You have a choice to get up in the morning and go to work. You have a choice to get up in the morning and go to college. You have a choice. So it now depends on you on what you do. So if you decide that this morning I'm getting up to go to work, at the end of 30 days, you're going to get your, your pay complete because you went to your work without get, having any off day. That's the same thing, my brother, my sister. We have a choice. The point is that are we making the right choice? Both in the choice of whom we are serving and our journey of finishing well. It is a choice. It is a determination. This widow had a choice. She had a choice of sitting at home and saying, okay, I have an enemy. I have an adversary that is always troubling me every time. I'll just sit down at home or rather I will dodge the adversary. I will even run away from him. I will always stay in my house so that he doesn't come and trouble me. We have that choices. There are certain situations in your life that you are not happy with. You have a choice. You have a choice of accommodating that problem or dealing with that problem. There is a choice. Then there was something this woman knows. She knew an information. You know what the Bible said in the book of Hosea? My people perish for lack of knowledge. She had an information. 
She didn't just sit down and say, oh, this adversary is always troubling me. And he knows I have no one. He knows because did, there was no mention of our children. So ah, he knows I have no nobody around here. He knows that my husband is dead. If my husband was alive, he wouldn't come and trouble me. She didn't sit down and just wallow in self-pity. She had an information. And what was that information? She knew that there was somebody that could help her. My brother, my sister, we have the information. You have the information. You know what to do. But most times, we don't do it. Based on laziness or based on, I don't know, the excuse to give. But we don't do it. We just relax. Most times, we just allow the adversary to just be troubling us because we can't be bothered of getting up. We are not bothered to get up in the middle of the night. We are not bothered to kill our flesh. We are not bothered to fast. But yet the problem is there. She had an information. She knew that there was somebody that could help her. She knew that there was a judge. She didn't sit down and look at the circumstances of how wicked this judge was. She didn't look at the circumstances of what people would have told her that this judge, don't go and meet him. He's not going to help you. She didn't listen to hearsay or the, them say. She just knew that this man, this adversary, the only way I can get rid of this person that is troubling me is to go and meet this judge. Most times, my brother, my sister, as children of God, we have a wonderful God. But you know the problem we have? We are too lazy. We give up easily. I told for people that connected with the Facebook program yesterday, the Lord showed me a vision when I was praying. He, he, he showed me an open vision. That was That's a gift I've been asking God for a long time. He just answered me. And I was praying and he showed me, he, saw, he showed me a man on a bike, on a motorbike, with a lot of luggage at his back, in the, in the front, on the side, and he was struggling to drive. And the Lord told me that's what happens to his children, that most times we like to carry the burden on our own. We don't give him the burden to carry. So my brother, my sister, we know that we have a God who never fails. We know. If I ask you now, even if you, you've been a child of God for donkey years, for 20 years, 10 years, or you just give your life to Jesus Christ one year, even somebody that is watching that you don't believe in God, you know that there is God, that there is, that there is a force that is good, even, if, even though you don't believe in God. There are people that know. They, they, they might not be born again, but they know that, yes, God is kind. You know it yourself. That you have a judge that can fight for you. There's somebody that is connected. You are oppressed in your place of work. And you know that you have somebody that can fight your battle for you. Why are you not crying to the judge? You've given up on him. You know that yes, there is a God that will answer your prayers. But you just can't be bothered no more. This widow didn't do that. She knew. She had an information that there was a judge in the land. You are connected now. You are oppressed, depressed, oppressed, every side. I'm telling you today, this is the information the Lord has sent me to tell you. That there is a God who can help you. Information is very, very important. Information, very, very important. She had an information and she followed up with that information. What are you doing with the information you have? Regarding that job, what, what have you followed up with the information you had? Regarding that, that assignment or that project or whatever it is, what have you done with the information you have in your hand? Are you trusting God for the fruit of the womb? There is an information that you need to know today. And that information says that none shall be barren in the land. So what are you doing with that information? Are you acting on that information? Or you're just letting it be that you can't be bothered anymore? Now, another thing that we must note is that if you go to verse 3, he said it that there was a widow in the city and she came to him saying, get, get justice for me, for my adversary. My brother, my sister, she, she didn't beat about the bush. She didn't go from one place to another or just go in front of the adversary and start crying. Adversary in front of the judge and start crying. I have one enemy. This enemy is always tormenting me. In the morning, he comes to knock at the door. In the night, he comes. No, she went straight. She told the Lord what she wanted. Straight away, no messing about. She told him. She said, look, I want justice for my, for my adversary. Sometimes we pray amiss, my brother, my sister. We pray amiss. That's why I laugh at individuals that you, you get influenced by other people's opinion. You get easily influenced by, people, by other people's opinion. Forgetting that it is only God that can help. 
She went straight to him. What are you telling God in your closet? Most times, my brother, my sister, what you are trusting God for, you need to back it up with certain things. There are some times when some people to the glory of God come and say, Evangelist, please, um, I want you to agree with me. I will tell them as the Holy Spirit leads, make a vow. Be specific with the prayer request. Everlasting Father, I want a job in this month of February. It is written in your word. You said whatever I want, you will grant to me. You said promotion does not come from the west, from the south, from the east. It comes from you only. Father, I need to be promoted. I need a job. I need a job within this specific time. Lord, please grant my request. And if you do it for me, this is what I will do. Be specific with your prayer request. Don't come to the presence of the Lord and start crying and say, Lord, ah, you see what the enemy has done for me. The enemy, yesterday night, the enemy came in my dream and stood in front of me. The, God knows. Hey, in my place of work, you see that man, he's always oppressing me. Anything I do, he doesn't like it. God knows. Hey, Father, in the month of January, I cry to you, no job. Second, you know now I don't have job. How do I pay my bills? He knows. Ask the Lord what you want. One, even me as a human being, if you call me, I'm telling you as human, if you send me a message and you say, good morning, good morning, ma. Okay, I'll answer you, I'll say good morning. Okay. If you are not specific with what you want me to do or what request you want, I'm not going to push it. I'll, if you say good morning, I'll say good morning. I just said I should greet you, I'll say okay. I thank you so much for greeting me. But if you send a message and say, Evangelist, good morning. Please, when can I call you? And there's one project. In fact, I respond more to when people relate or you say what you want. Instantly. If you tell me, Evangelist, I have this. Please, I, I just want you to help me and I agree. I don't have any power. It's God that does it. Ah, please, uh, just help me and I agree. Am I able to call me immediately? But if you send a message and you say, Oh, Evangelist, and I have something to discuss with you. The probability of me replying instantly is very slim. Because I believe that if it's something urgent, you might even write it down. Or you might, there's a way you write the message I will understand. That's the same way. I'm not God, I'm just human, but that's the way I relate. So just imagine, you come in the presence of the Lord, you are crying, 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 crying. Okay, when you finish crying, by the time you finish crying, you've wasted your saliva, you've wasted your tears, then you are tired, you are not able to pray in the Spirit very well, nothing again. Why don't you just go in the presence of the Lord, thank the Lord Almighty, worship His Majesty, tell the Lord, be specific and say, Lord, my Father, this is what you said in your word, please answer me. I'm telling you, God will answer you. Most times we'll beat about the bush too much. Too much. Even sometimes I encounter, I'll say, what do you want the Lord to do for you? You know, you just talk, talk, talk. Okay, what is your specific prayer request? What is it that you want the Lord to do? Most times we are not specific. Get justice for me, for my adversary. And it will not for a while. My brother, my sister, when you pray to the Lord Almighty, God answers instantly i'm telling you god answers our prayer request instantly but you might ask that oh but i'm not seeing the evidence that's where faith comes from that is where faith comes from if you've prayed to god and you believe and know that he's able to do it move on when you come to the presence of the lord you just say lord thank you lord for that prayer request thank you lord thank you lord it's just as if i'm going to be practical about it you come to me and you say, evangelist, please, I need 20 pounds. And I say, okay, don't worry, tomorrow I'll do it. Then in the evening, you text me and you say, thank you for the money. And I'm wondering, but I'm not giving her the money. In the morning again, you say, thank you for the money. I'm like, after some time, I'll, you know, I'll feel somehow. I'll be like, ah, this person is even thanking me for what I've not even done. Let me give it to her. Or let me give it to him. That's the same way my brother, my sister. That is where faith comes from. Believing that God is able to answer you. He said, while you are yet speaking, while you are yet speaking, he's able to answer in the name of Jesus. The Lord will grant your request. So move on and begin to thank God for the testimony. Stop wallowing in self-pity. He would not for a while, but afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this woman troubled me, I will adventure. Least by a continual coming, she weary me. Now, you might not ask the question and say, 
Okay, evangelist, but she was always consistently, she was being consistent about it, asking the, ju the just every time. Yes, that means she was always in the presence of the judge. Don't forget, this is a judge that doesn't have time. This is a judge that was not friendly, he had no regard for no one. But this is a woman that consistent. I'm sure wherever the judge lives, she'll be there. She might not even say anything. She'll just stand there. Because remember, in the first instance, she told the judge what she wanted. Get justice for me, for my, for my adversary. She already told the judge the specific request that she wanted. So when the judge, when the judge said, this woman trouble me, I will avenge her at least by her continual coming. She weary me. By a continual coming. So this was a scenario whereby she was always going there. She might not even tell anything to the judge. Maybe the judge comes out from the court. She will stand there. She will just be looking at her. She said, good afternoon, judge. Hey. The man will say, oh my word, this woman has come. In the morning again, she's in front of herself. Good morning, judge. Good morning, judge. As you are seeing, she doesn't need to talk too much. The judge already knows what she's asking. Because from the first instance, she already told the judge what she wanted. And avenge me of my adversary because he was in a position to do that. My brother, my sister, when you ask God for your request, most times we are users of God. As tough as it might be, go to the go down to one of the videos after this, watch one video that says, Why are you serving God? Why do you serve God? Most times we are users. Once you get your testimony, you run away from the presence of the Lord. You become too busy for God. But before then, you were not too busy. That's the same way. The presence of God, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. The Lord wants your presence. He wants you to always be in his presence. The Lord wants you. I will share a very funny testimony with you. It might be strange to you, but it is not strange to me. You know what? The Lord wants us to always talk with him. He wants us to always... Be in his presence. He, our God is a jealous God. I told you last what, last week, the Holy Spirit told me. He said, ask me for anything. I like to know everything about you. As, as simple or as, as strange as it might be, the Lord wants to always talk with me. That's the same way. Most times we just get what we want and we leave. The Lord wants our presence. This widow was always troubling this man. By coming, going there every time. You must always be in the presence of the Lord. It's not all the time you just be in the presence of the Lord, asking, asking, asking. Thank the Lord, be in his presence and worship his majesty. Be in his presence, just thank him, just sing praises to him. Be in his presence and just lie down and say, Holy Spirit, I want to talk to you. And begin to talk to him. There was something troubling me. Very minute thing, I just saw a, a, pet, a pest in my, in my kitchen. And I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy at all. I was like, oh my word, I don't want this rat in my kitchen. What are you doing here? And you know, it was a very strange scenario because the Lord told me to go to the kitchen and I got there and I saw the rat pass. And I was like, oh my word, I don't want this. I don't want this rat in this kitchen. Yeah, somebody might say about rat. No, I don't want it. It's what you don't want, you don't want. And you know what? It was a very strange scenario. And I knew that it went, it went to hide in the storage. So I now set a trap. I set a trap. I put a rat. I put a cheese on the rat glue. And you know what I did? I said, if I be a woman of God, I want this rat to die within 24 hours. I'm sorry to all the animal activists. It is what you want that you don't want. What you don't want, you don't want. And I said, I said, if I be a woman of God within 24 hours, I want this rat to die. And even when I prayed, I was like, what are you talking about? What, what do you take anointing for? So I now told the Holy Spirit, I said, Holy Spirit, I don't want this rat. The Holy Spirit told me that, okay. You don't, I said, I don't want it. He said, okay. And you know what? In the morning when I woke up, I was like, I'm going to call the rat exterminator. And when I called them, they were telling me 140 pounds. I was like, what? 140 pounds to chase one rat from my kitchen. I said, okay. I said, okay, I'll get back to you. And I was like, okay, fine. So I went down and I went to check. And I didn't see the, both the trap. I didn't see anything. And I was worried. I was like, if this rat should die here, the smell and it's near the kitchen. I was so I was so worried, and I kept telling the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, please, I don't want this rat. I don't want this rat. And I heard the Holy Spirit. He told me, Okay, don't worry. I'll make you find it. And I forgot about it. You might think it's strange. You might look at it that what is she talking about? It it depends on your relationship. That is what God wants. 
the Holy Spirit wants to talk with you. I'm telling you, he wants to talk to you with minute things that you don't count as minute. I'm telling you. And lo and behold, hours later, I just went to the storage and I was tidying up, you know, like I was making sure that everything was inside a, a, a box so that I'll be able to, you'll be able to see that if any rat wants to enter, you'll be able to catch it. You know, I wasn't just comfortable. And when I finished, the Holy Spirit just told me to remove certain things from a particular place, like a curtain that I, I really don't need. So I brought everything out. I threw it out and I said, okay, let me just do the general cleaning. And I just trusted God that the rat will be dead. And behold, once I opened the storage, I saw the, the glue on the, on the side. And I was like, oh my word, this rat has escaped from this glue. Oh my God, what am I going to do? It's escaped. And I saw it on the floor. The rat's dead. The Lord wants you to always be in his presence. You might not find this as a testimony. You might not look at you, you might just be like, what is she talking about? To me, it is something great because it shows me that the Lord knows what I want, he knows my feelings, he knows what I don't like, because I told him, if I didn't tell him and I was chasing the rat all about and I'm, I'm, I'm using my own, I called ex exterminator, he would just tell me, you're just wasting your money, 140 pound. And I remember vividly in the morning, when I was in the bathroom, the Holy Spirit told me, he said, wait for it to die. I heard the Holy Spirit. He said, wait for it to die. I was like, okay, I'll wait for it. But I was telling the Holy Spirit, I said, but if he dies, the smell is terrible. And now I need to call people. I spoke with the Holy Spirit, as simple as it is, as minute as it is, as you might think, oh, but it's nothing. It is something to me. That's the same way. This woman was always going to the presence of the judge. It's not composite that she was going all the time to ask, to ask for what she wanted. She already told the judge what she wanted. That's the same thing. You've asked the Lord, but don't be far from the presence of the Lord. He said, at least by her continual coming, she weary me. She was persistent. She didn't give up. Yes, ask the Lord for what you want. Believe he's done it. But be consistent in serving God. Don't, don't just run away. Or maybe because you did not see your testimony. You now leave. Who told you? How do you now know that your testimony is just coming the next day? How would you know? You might have been fasting, which I'm going to talk about. You might have been fasting since June. The Lord has, has orchestrated the fasting. Ja June, July, since last year. Now you are, we are going into the, the fasting of February, March. How do you now know that it is not this fasting that you have it at your testimony? You never know. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? My brother, my sister, please let us note this. Jesus Christ said, shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night, not just day, but both day and night. So when you pray in the day, you must pray in the nights. When you pray in the night, you must pray in the day. You must pray consistently. Though he bears long with them, our God will fight for you, but your prayer must be persistent. You must be consistent in the place of prayer. There are so many times, my brother, my sister, that your testimony, the Lord will not allow that testimony to manifest. Because if it comes at that time, it might now be a, a stumbling block to you. So the Lord, while you are waiting, the Lord, as a, if you're a genuine child of God, while you are waiting, you pray to the Lord and you believe he's done it. I'm telling you, you will see the sign in which the Lord will tell you that he has answered you. That is where faith comes from. That is when you begin to ask the Lord and say, thank you, Lord, for this testimony. Then you move on to the next prayer point. Though it tarries. Let's go to the book of Abacock 2 verse 3. Abacock 2 verse 3. Abacock 2 verse 3. It says, for the re revelation. I'm going to read from the New International Version. Okay, let's read from the King's, King's, James, King's James Bible. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Your testimony is for an appointed time. 
But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Whatever the Lord has written in his word, and you claim it, though there is a delay, at the end you will testify. And not lie, though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. If we read the, let's read the, um, let us read another translation. Um, King James, American King James Version. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I'm looking for the... Okay, yeah. Let's read the um, Word English Bible. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, and it always towards the end and won't prove false. Though it takes time, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It won't, it won't delay. The testimony will come. As long as it's written in the word of God. Whatever you're trusting God for. As long as it's written here. And you're claiming it. It will come. Just begin to thank God. And keep repeating that word that says whatever you're trusting God for. If you're into financial, maybe there's financial difficulties. The Bible says we shall be lenders and not borrowers. So you stick to that word and say, Lord, it is written in your word. I shall be a lender, not a borrower. You are the one that teaches a man to profit. You are the one that gives riches and add no sorrow. Father, Lord, teach me to profit. Keep claiming it. Even if your business is not growing, keep claiming it and keep repeating that word into the world, into your life. Eventually, my brother, my sister, you will see changes. Begin to thank God for that testimony you've not seen. And who cry out day and night, though he bears long. If you go to the book of Job 14, verse 14. Job 14, verse 14. Let's quickly read it. Job 14, verse 14. Actually, the B part. Job 14, verse 14. I love it so much. It says, though I will wait till my change comes. Let's read it. Job 14, verse 14. Let's read it. God is a great God. I will wait until my change comes. Let's let me read it from my own Bible. Okay, yes. Okay, let's let's let me read it from here. Job 14, verse 14. It says, If a man dies, shall he live again? So for the fact that you are alive, there is hope. All the days of my heart service, I will wait till my change comes. I will wait in the place of prayer. And we wait in the, in the presence, in the environment in which the only person that can help me is. That widow knew that that judge was the only one that can help her. So she was always around his vicinity. You must always be in the presence of the Lord. They that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Most High. I will say of the Lord is my strength and my refuge. It is when you are under the presence of the Lord that you can say boldly that the Lord is your strength and your refuge. Who can dwell in the secret place of the Most High? Who may abide in his holy tabernacle? He who has a pure heart. He who has not lifted up his heart to God. You must be born again. That's the first step. For you to even have that, that, uh, that, uh, that privilege of even asking from the judge, you must be born again. You must be born again. If you are not born again, yes, people can say, oh, but uh, uh, God answers the prayers of unbelievers. Are you an unbeliever? If you are an unbeliever and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you are just enjoying a little bit of the mercy of God. When you now become a child of God, you begin to enjoy bountiful mercy of God. Yes, the Lord reigns on both the unbelievers and believers. Because the believer needs the rain. That's why they are enjoying the rain. A disaster can be averted because of one believer. Because of one prayer point of a righteous person. A disaster can be averted in a family because of one child of God. So my brother, my sister, why are you delaying your, your day of salvation? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? That's the question for you and I. Do we still believe that Jesus Christ is returning soon? Most people have lost faith in that belief that Jesus Christ is returning soon. 
Because if we have not lost faith, as children of God, we will be serious with our Christian life. As children of God, when we go into the presence of God, we will know how to behave ourselves. As children of God, we will, we will let go of bitterness and we will forgive each other. As children of God, we will love each other. We will love both the people that hate you and those that don't hate you. You will love them. Going back, which I always repeat, going back to our adversary. We have only one adversary. John 10.10 10 says, The enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. This woman had one adversary. One adversary. One adversary. And we have one common adversary, which is the devil. You can't love the devil. The devil doesn't love you. If you're a child of God, he only loves his own. And he doesn't have anything good for them. He loves them because he's using them as vessels of destruction. After some time, he will dump them. After some time, because he wants a lot of people to go to the pit of hell with him. So there is no one the devil loves. Nobody. He's only happy with his own people. We have one common adversary, which is the devil. And his cohorts, agent of darkness, principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. They are all over the places. Geographical demons. They are everywhere. Household enemies. They are everywhere. We have one adversary. The only person. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that the horse is ready for the battle. But vengeance belongs to the Lord. Victory is determined by Jehovah. First of all, you must be a friend of God, my brother, my sister. So that that adversary, I don't know what your adversary is. I don't know what your adversary is. It could be a household enemy. Going back to that point of, but you are meant to love our enemies. Yes, why not? You are meant to love people that don't love you. You are meant to show love to people that persecute you. But not somebody that wants to kill you. If somebody wants to kill you, yes, you love them, but you go in the place of prayer to tell the Lord what to do to them. I don't, I don't, I don't, my, my eye, my eyes, my prayer, if you, if you are connected with Foundation on the Solid Drug Ministry, our prayers is not prayer of gentility. Because why? The enemy is not gentle. He just wants to kill, destroy, and ruin people's destiny. And my destiny is not for real. My children's destiny is not for real. So it depends on you. My brother, my sister, are you truly a child of God? Do you believe in God? Do you have faith in his word? Do you really have faith in his word? So when your adversary, he could be a strong man of your father's house. He could be a demonic auntie that has been terrorizing your life. My brother, my sister, you don't need to fight with the auntie. The Bible says our weapons are not kana. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war against the flesh. You don't go and confront an agent of darkness that is troubling your life. You go in the place of prayer. Go to the judge that can fight your battle. And say, Lord, fight this battle for me. I cannot do it on my own. By flesh, no one can prevail. It's not by power, it's not by might. In the book of Zechariah, it's not by power, it's not by might. But by my spirit, says the Lord, this mountain before Zerubbabel shall become plain. Zerubbabel that started the foundation will finish it. What is that adversary that is standing before you and saying that that project you started, you will not finish it? What is that adversary before you that says that whenever you conceive within three months, you lose the pregnancy? What is that adversary before you that comes to molest you in the night? What is that adversary before you that comes to rape you in the night? What is that adversary before you that comes to fight you in the night? What is that adversary before you that comes to torment you? What is that adversary in your place of war that is always sitting on your testimony, te sitting on your promotion letter? What is that adversary that waits for you at the edge of breakthrough? That pulls you down in the ladder of growth, in the ladder of promotion, in the ladder of light. What is that adversary that when you are climbing the mountain, it pulls you down? What do you do? You don't confront that adversary. You go to the king of kings, the just judge. The creator of heaven and earth that makes the princes of this earth as nothing. You go to him and say, Lord, avenge for me. That's where the Lord has orchestrated a fasting program on foundation on his solid rock ministry. But before I go into that, if you know you are not yet a child of God, for you to be able to cry to the adversary, to the Lord to help your adversary, first of all, you must leave the adversary. If you are a friend of the adversary, the adversary will not leave. 
It's just as if you are my friend. Then you come into my house and I'm chasing you. Why would I chase my friend away? No, I can't chase my friend away. Rather, I will accommodate my friend. So if you are saying that you want the Lord to be your friend, then you need to tell the adversary and say, I am not your friend. Leave me alone. But as long as you are still, you are still accommodating the adversary, you cannot have two people. It is either you have God or you don't have God. There's no lukewarmness here. So please, just say these prayers after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Send your Holy Spirit to me. I renounce you, Satan, and your works in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that you said the prayers, I'll pray with you. But before we do that, I'll tell you what we have to say. The Almighty Father has orchestrated a fasting program on foundation on a solid rock ministry. You see, at this particular fasting period, is going to be more of prayer. Because why? We are going to our judge to say, avenge our adversary. I don't know which, your, which, of which adversary you have. But the Lord has orchestrated powerful prayer points. The Lord has, is going to be dealing specifically with some certain adversaries in our lives. One of it is spiritual spouse. And some other ones that are very, very deep. We do it in the last three days, the last two days of the month. Last month on was January to February was awesome. And the Lord has spoken. I asked him, I said, Lord, please. He said, I'm going to do double of what I did in January fasting. Don't miss it. It's three days fasting. We're going to be starting on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So it's going to be a juice fast, meaning that we're going to be breaking with only water and juice. So you can go and buy a, pre, a, pre, a juice presser, a pre processor, or if you don't have, just buy juice. Use apple juice, any juice, any type of juice, and it's very, very nutritional, funny enough. It's very nutritional. So make sure you drink water. We're going to be breaking by 6 p.m., but um, we're going to be meeting uh, on Facebook. So if you've not followed Facebook, please go to Facebook. Ensure you connect. Aren't you tired of, of nearly there but never there? Are you not tired of, tired of being oppressed and molested? Don't you want to testify? There are some certain things that cannot go without fasting. Don't let anybody deceive you. So Jesus Christ even said it, that there are some problems that cannot move without fasting. Some demons will not move anywhere unless you add fasting. So please make sure you connect. We're starting this Tuesday, 12 noon. We're going to start 12 noon, 4.30 p.m., 12 midnight. 12 noon, 4.30 p.m., 12 midnight. 12 noon, 4.30 p.m. Make sure, so if you've not followed the, uh, the page, go to Facebook. My, um, Foundation on a Solid Rock Ministry, Matthew 7 verse 25. Make sure you put the Matthew. You can see the logo at the back here. You can see, that's the logo of the ministry. Matthew 7 verse 25. Go there, follow us. And then if you have a specific prayer request or there's something you want to discuss, send an email to Foundation on a Solid Rock Ministry at yahoo.co.uk. And definitely I'll respond. But you know, during the juice fast, I'm extremely busy. So my response might not come as quick as you want, but I'll try and respond in the name of Jesus Christ. And I know that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. So please, my brother, my sister, have faith. Even Jesus Christ said, he said, will he still find faith when he returns? Have faith that the Lord is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask of him. Once you've prayed to the Lord, begin to thank him for the testimony. Begin to thank him and make sure that you are always in the presence of the Lord. Don't run away from the presence of the Lord. Because God has answered your testimony. Doesn't mean that you should run away. You must be consistent. Because why? The enemy goes about looking for whom to devour. He's looking for, he's a testimony thief. He's a thief. So he's looking for a way to penetrate. And still he's angry with children of God. He's not happy with children of God. And I know he's not happy with you. And I'm not happy with him. I don't like him at all. I hate him with passion. Uh -huh. So any agent, all these uh, principalities, how can I like them if you are a child of God? Darkness and light cannot be friends. Is that that light is there or darkness? So once you, once you are a child of God, he doesn't like you. But you know what? Very, very soon, Jesus is returning soon. Then we are going to, all of us, children, genuine children, we are going to see the devil. Now I say, so this is the way you look, you ugly thing. So this is the way you look and then you will be locked up. Locked up where there will be torment, pain, and there will be a lot of people that will be saying, Had I known, and I heard the word of God, and I heard the day of salvation, had I known, had I known, but you, you just made the right choice. I'll tell you what to do after prayers. 
Father Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for this word that you've taught us. Father, please give us the sustaining grace to have the faith and to be persistent, to be consistent in our place of prayer, in everything, in all your commandments. Please help us. And for everyone that said these prayers, Father, please give them the sustaining grace to finish work. As they've confessed you, Lord, my Father, as your Lord and as their Lord and as your Lord and as their Lord and their Savior, my Father, please give them the grace to finish work. They've confessed you, Lord, as Lord and Savior. Father, please help them to finish war. Father, please help them to finish war. Father, please help them to finish war. Anything that will draw them away from you, Father, Lord, please take it away from them. In the name of Jesus. And me that you have used as a vessel unto honor. Fresh fire with anointing, let it rest upon me. In Jesus' mighty name, I prayed. Amen, amen, amen. So for individuals that you said that prayers, make sure you walk your salvation with fear and trembling. Follow Foundation on a Solid Rock Ministry. Follow this page, like this page, subscribe this page. Follow us on Facebook. We have a lot of activities. The month of March is my month and there will be a lot of activities that the Lord has orchestrated. So please, my brother, my sister, ensure, ensure, ensure that you always read the word of God. Not just read it, obey the word of God. Everything that is written in this word of God is true. There's no false thing here. It is true. It works for me. And it will work for you. So please, my brother, please, my sister, make sure. And I know that the enemy will not come and steal your salvation from you in the name of Jesus. You will finish well in Jesus' name. So, by God's grace, ensure you connect with the, with the fasting program. Ensure. Fasting is very, very important. It helps you medically. It helps you. It drains all the things that all the toxins out of you. Then juice is also very, very good. Very, very good. So please connect. Fasting means that you are going to suppr suppress your flesh. That is, you are going to speak to your flesh and say, flesh, hear the word of the Lord. I am fasting for three days. So no chicken, no rice, no fish. After three days, I'll come and eat you. Food is always there. Food is not going anywhere. After Thursday, by God's grace, Thursday evening, you go and eat as much as you eat. And the strange thing is that on that Thursday, when you now see the food, you won't have the appetite. So it's very, very important. You, you know, when you're fasting, your spirit man is higher than your flesh. So when you pray those prayers, all those demons, they have to flee. All the adversary that is tormenting your life, they will have to flee. But after the prayer and everything, after the fasting, make sure you are consistent in the presence of the King of Kings. I know that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, we still have books. We have quite a lot of books. If you know you are interested in any of the books, please send a message. We have quite a lot of books here. So send a message and then I would... Um, I'll tell you how you can get it. And I know that God will help each one of us in the name of Jesus. Have a testimony filled week. I'll see you next week, Sunday, as usual, with another topic the Holy Spirit gives. My name is Evangelist Mary O. Ajakai. Shalom. Remember to tell somebody Jesus loves them. And I'm telling you that Jesus loves you. Remember to share, to like, and to subscribe. God bless you.